Hello there, welcome to the October 2020 Applied Paper. Here we're looking at question 5. A health centre claims that the time a doctor spends with a patient could be modelled by a normal distribution with a mean of 10 minutes and a standard deviation of 4 minutes. Using this model, find the probability that the time spent with a randomly selected patient is more than 15 minutes. So in this question here, we have an X distribution where the mean is 10 minutes and the standard deviation is 4 minutes. And what we want to find is the probability that x is less, sorry, is more than 15. So this is a standard question for the calculator. Go to mode 7 on the calculator, hit mode 2 for normal CD, and you want to input the variables of 15 being your lower bound. You don't really want an upper bound, so type something like 999 or 9999, uh, standard deviation 4, mean of 10, and press enter, and you get your answer. Write it to three significant figures, 0.1. Oh, 06. So there we are, standard question for the calculator there. Let's move on to part B. Some patients complain that the mean time the doctor spends with a patient is more than 10 minutes. The receptionist takes a random sample of 20 minutes and finds that the mean time the doctor spends with a patient is 11.5 minutes. Stating your hypothesis clearly and using a 5% significance level, test whether or not the evidence to support the patient's claim. So the null hypothesis here is that the mean is um, is 10 minutes. And the alternate hypothesis is that the mean is bigger than 10. That's all we can say. We're not saying that the mean is now 11.5. We're saying that the mean is just bigger than 10. And the significance level we're working at is to the 5% significance level. And we have an x distribution, which is normally distributed with a 10 as the mean. I'm going to assume it's still 10 uh, with a standard deviation of 4. No, now the standard deviation changes because now we're working with a sample of our x distribution, which is going to now be 4 squared over 20 as the standard deviation because there's 20 patients. So when you're doing a sample and a hypothesis test, you have to divide your variance by the uh, value n, in which case the standard deviation is now 4 divided by the square root of 20. Now what we're going to test for is we're going to test for the probability of x being more than 11.5. So because the patient suspects that the doctor is spending more time than 10 minutes, we're going to have a look at what the probability would be of the doctor spending 11.5 minutes or more with the patient. Because if, it's, if the probability of 11.5 is so small that it's not going to have happened at random, but still with the mean of 10 minutes, then there may be some underlying increase in the mean. So let's have a look on the calculator. Let's do this calculation on the calculator. It's going to be mode 7. Again, it's going to be in normal CD mode. We want the lower boundary to be 11.5. We don't really want an upper boundary. We now have changed the standard deviation because we're working with a sample of our distribution, a sample of 20 people in our distribution. So it's 4 divided by the square root of 20. The mean still stays the same as 10. And the probability here is 0.0468 to three significant figures. So here's our conclusion. So the 0 .4, 0 0.0468 value uh, is less than 5%. So therefore, we reject the null hypothesis. There is evidence that the mean time has increased following this calculation. So um, what we do is we test our probability with 5%. And if it's less than 5%, then that's so unlikely, it's, it's probably due to the mean increasing rather than um, anything else. So, so therefore we have evidence to support that the mean time has increased. So let's move on. Okay, so moving on to part C now. The health centre also claims that the time a dentist spends with a patient during a routine appointment, T minutes, can be modelled by a normal distribution where T is normally distributed with a mean of 5 and a standard deviation of 3.5. Using this model, find the probability that a routine appointment with a dentist takes less than two minutes. Okay, so it's kind of a standard probability question here. So part I, find the probability of x, no, not x, t is less than two. So you go to your calculator 
Uh, mode 7 again, mode number 2 for normal CD, and you want the upper boundary to be 2, you don't really want there to be a lower boundary, and your answer there is 0 0.196. So a standard kind of calculator question. Moving on to part B, find the probability that t is less than 2, given that t is greater than 0. Now let's just remind ourselves of what the formula is for conditional probability. It's going to be the probability of B, given that A is true, equals the probability of A and B over the probability of A. This is a, a rule in the formula booklet or a general rule of probability for conditional probability. Now what does that say about question 2? It says that the probability of T being less than 2, given that T is greater than 0, should be equal to the probability of both, so, so the intersection of both, which is going to be that the probability that the time is in between 0 to 2 over the probability that t is greater than 0. So we need to work out both of these and then divide one by the other. So let's work out the probability that the time the patient spends with the dentist is in between 0 to 2 minutes. So we'll go to our calculator, lower boundary of 0, upper boundary of 2, standard deviation 3.5, mean of 5, and that's going to give us an answer of 0 0.119. Now I'll write down 0 0.119, but in my calculator I'll save this to make sure my answer is as accurate as possible, so I'll press STO, then the A button. The next thing you need to do is we now need to work out the denominator. So we now need to work out to go back into that same mode on the calculator with a lower boundary this time of zero and no upper boundary. So this is working out the probability that the time spent with the dentist is zero or more. And that gives us an answer of 0 0.923. Now when we do one divided by the other, so we'll go, uh, we'll store this as value B and then we'll go back into the main mode of the calculator and do A divided by B, and this gives us 0 0.129 to three significant figures. And it's so helpful having that store feature there, doing the division for us with the accurate answers as much as possible. And moving on to question three, uh, hence explain why this normal distribution may not be a good model for t. Well, if we have a look at the probability of t being greater than zero, um, that would infer that the probability of t being less than zero is 0 0.077. Um, which is impossible, you can't have a, a uh, a checkup that's less than zero minutes and 0 0.07 is quite a substantial amount of probability as well it's seven percent of the time that this model will be wrong which is impossible and the model will be wrong seven percent of the time and the model will be wrong seven percent of the time well about 8% of the time. And that's not including the time where you will only have a checkup for one minute. It's definitely going to take more than one minute uh, to have a good checkup. So it's at least strong 8% of the time, um, potentially more as well. And let's move on to part D then. The dentist believes that she cannot complete a routine appointment in less than two minutes. She suggests the health centre should use a refined model only including these values of t greater than two. Find the median time for a routine appointment using this model, giving your answer correct to one decimal place. So what's going to be helpful here is to draw out the normal distribution to think about what we're going to do in this question. So what we've got is a normal distribution where the mean is 5 and the standard deviation is 3.5. Now what the dentist wants to do is to ignore all times that are from 2 or fewer. So we want to now ignore this probability here. And the question asks us to find a new median time. Now what the median time will refer to is the new time. So it's probably going to be more than 5 now because we're ignoring these values here where we have half our probability on this side and half our probability on this side. So let's first work out what this probability we're going to discard on the left hand side is. So let's go into an upper bound of 2 
lower boundary that we're not um, counting. And we're going to get 0 0.196. So now what we want to do is work out what the rest of this probability up here is. So let's save it as A and then recall it and then do 1 minus A. And that's going to give us 0 0.804. Now what we need to do next is we now need to half that date, half that probability to work out where our median is going to be. So if we now do answer divided by 2, we have 0 0.402 probability here and 0 0.402 probability here. So now what we want to do is we now want to work out what this value here is, where we have the probability of this um, this amount here. So we have 0 0.196 and 0 0.402. So we're going to use the inverse mode on the normal calculator uh, to work out this value here. So what that's going to involve is, um, in fact the diagram is fine as uh, working marks for this question here. So what we'll now do is we'll save that as value B. And now what we're looking to find on the inverse normal mode of the calculator, that's mode 3 now, is the probability where we have an area that is A, this is A, and this is probability that's representing B, so probability area of A and B, where the standard deviation is 3.5 and the mean is 5, and the answer there is going to be 5.87, 5.87. Eight, seven is the answer to that question there, so 5.87 minutes. So we probably want to write down some workings for that, so we wanted to find the probability of x, no, t being less than, what was the probability that we were looking for? 0 0.5, no, so probability of t is less than k equals 0 0.5 nine seven eight that was the probability area we wanted to find we want to work out the value k so we're therefore right therefore k equals 5.87 minutes and there we are that's the answer for this question here then so that's five question five worth a total of 15 marks for this question here and that's all the stats section completed now so we'll now move on to the mechanics questions for the october 2020 paper